Hey, what's going on guys? Krosama here. Now today we're taking a look at a very special Gundam, one of which has probably divided the community more times than I've ever seen, and it is the mobile suit Gundam Turn A. Now, I love this mobile suit. I've had the uh, you know, I had, I had the Master Grade about nine or eight years, but recently, uh, one of my members, uh, Mr. Orb, he wanted to sponsor a video, and he chose the Master Grade Turn A, and he actually requested it to be painted. Didn't specify what kind of paint job, but he was like, hey, I would love for you to paint this model kit, and I was like, dude... I'm all about it. I've built it in the past, and I really enjoyed it when I did build it. So revisiting would actually be really awesome. Sure enough, this was a pleasure and a joy to build again. And you know, thank you, Orb, for sponsoring this video. Uh, truly, I am blessed to have this model kit once again uh, being built by my hands. And I'm going to do some good work to it once it's painted. Now, what is the Turn A Gundam? Well, the Turn A Gundam is a design made by said Mead, and he also has done work in the past on Blade Runner and other you know films that I've really enjoyed, Blade Runner especially. But this is a really unique take on just the idea of Gundam. And I would say, I mean, this came out in 1999. And before then, I mean, we had GPO-1, we had the Wing Gundam series. Uh, G-Fighter was a little bit weird, but we had that and had a lot of weird concepts as well. And then we had, you know, Double Zeta, Zeta, um, obviously the OG Gundam and uh, Victory. Lots of different mobile suits came and gone. But I think this one is probably that one point in the Gundam universe that was just like, we're going to make something so dynamic as the lead suit that it's going to have a lot of people kind of talking about it for years to come. And even today, I do see a lot of people in comment sections on Facebook or even on YouTube comments talking about whether they hate it or whether they love it. Now, I'm not going to be the person that says like you're uncultured if you don't like it. But I will say if your dislike on it is really just surface level, mm, I would say probably watch the anime or at least try and visit it again because this is a very good looking suit and I want to say that that's objective, but it's, I know it's very subjective. Uh, however, I love the suit and I want to go ahead and give you a good review on the Master Grade. Now, this review it would not be possible without Orb, but if you do want to pick up this suit, try NewTypeHQ.com, and if they don't have it over there, hey, maybe go ahead and send some emails. Let them know that you want to get the Master Grade Turn A, but if they have some other Master Grade or High Grade Turn A type model kits, you can go ahead and hit up NewTypeHQ.com and use that promo code Krosama for your 10% off on your first purchase. So this kit came out in 2007, and that was the year I actually graduated high school and joined the Marine Corps. So it's a pretty unique year. It's uh, a year that defined my life and had a lot of crazy events occur. And to think that during that time of all those crazy events, this wonderful Master Grade model was released. And it really is a beaut. It came out and it retailed at 3,800 yen, which is relatively cheap uh, for a master grade of like this caliber. Like a lot of accessories, lots of good looking details on this. And it's only for, you know, about 38 bucks. Now talking about first impressions. When I finished building this kit, I could not stop playing with it. I really put it in a ton of poses. I did so much with it and I just was wanting more. I was like, I gotta, I gotta keep posing it. I gotta keep playing with it. I gotta like put it in different little situations, you know, try different, you know, equipments. And I just have so much fun playing with this model kit. And sure, model kits are not action figures by any means, but this really holds up very well over, what, 13 years? I mean, this is a very, very solid Master Grade that uses no polycaps. A lot of the plastic is going to be ABS, which is fine. Um, it's Some of it's kind of soft, but as long as you're not like hyper extending things or you're not like really pushing it past the durability limits, you're going to have a great time just playing with it, putting it in various poses or, you know, sticking it on the shelf and put it on a stand. Anything you want to do with this kit, it should be fine enough to go ahead and with stand any of that kind of stress. 
So let's talk details, and I don't mean exclusively just panel lines, even though panel lines is probably the best thing about this model kit, but I'm also talking about just some of the design choices when it came to the chest, the arms, as well as the legs. And then not only on top of that, you're going to have some of the like surface level details, which I mean, the arms is going to have like this breakup of armor, so you have like that gray with the white. Uh, even looking at the legs, there's a lot of parts on the legs that has holes, and you can see directly underneath where the inner frame parts are or just like some of the gray parts this doesn't really have a true true inner frame it, it kind of does uh but a lot of it's like made up of some weird you know like abs white parts uh for the most part though i i wouldn't consider this to have a, a inner frame uh it, it kind of has like a pseudo frame now you're also going to have that turn A symbol engraved on the forehead. I obviously didn't color mine in just yet because uh, I'm going to be painting this and I don't even know if I am going to do anything to it. I, I probably will, but we'll see when it comes to the paint job because I'm doing something spicy. And let us go down to where the cockpit is. Now the details on this I love because it's a very sharp angular look when it comes to those front skirts. They're, they're not even like really front skirts. It's 100% a core fighter. And that's so cool. Like the cockpit is the actual core fighter of this. And before I ever like built this thing, like when I was first kind of getting into Gundam, I always thought it was just how the front skirt looked. But then like when I watched the anime, I was like, oh wait, that's an actual cockpit. Interesting. So yeah, this comes off. And what you can do with it is basically just rotate it, uh, you know, to the actual front and from there rotate the actual wing binders and you have yourself a nice looking core fighter. Now, in terms of gimmicks, um, I guess it really doesn't have too many gimmicks. It does have the core fighter, which I've already explained, but it doesn't have like any LEDs. It doesn't have anything crazy going on. Um, I, I can show you the back of the legs and it's not as much of a gimmick, but for the articulation segment, um, you're going to be seeing like these little, you know, vents, all the thrusters on the back of the legs. I mean, these have like moving parts, so you can actually see these move whenever you're moving the leg. Uh, not as much of a gimmick, but I think it's really neat how you do see these popping out and all that. It, it just blows my mind. Now for the articulation, this kit came out in 2007, right? I think it does better than anything else that came around during this time and even a little bit after 2007. It, it's not doing anything like spectacular in terms of revolutionizing articulation, but when it came to like the 1.0 seed kits and a lot of like just the double O kits, you know, they were fine. XE is okay. But the problem that a lot of those kits had were probably like limited in articulation in certain areas, uh, but also probably weak joints, especially with the double O series. But this kit in particular, so far it doesn't have anything weak probably the leg is a little bit heavy if you're trying to do like you know long splits uh but you can still get it to where it's you know gonna stand out you just gotta kind of like work it a little bit uh but for the most part standing it up is easy uh even with the back all loaded up with the beam rifle as well as a shield no problems whatsoever it, I just really love it, man. This thing is going to be able to move all around. There's like almost no limitations to the articulation of this. Front skirts can move up, side skirts be moving around on a ball joint, and the legs themselves. I mean, you cannot ask for better articulation like this. Granted, it doesn't have like panel splits and all that, like, you know, the Perfect Grade Unleash has currently, but. This is, for a 2007 kit, this did really well in, in that department of articulation. Now for accessories, let's just start off with the beam rifle. Looks great. I love it. It has a little bit of a gimmicks with it when it comes to sliding the actual handle in and out for both the back uh, where the buttstock is as well as the front handle. Um, I, I think it, it's pretty cool how that works. Um, it's not something I'm like really like amazed by, but I think it is a pretty cool looking gimmick. And the back buttstock is going to be able to slide out to reveal another handle, which you can use the right hand to grip. Now you're also going to have the shield. Shield's very simple. There's not much going on with it. It has a little bit of movement, but it's a very simplistic shield with only like three layers, to be honest. You got your kind of like inner frame. Uh, you got your red and your white. So nothing really crazy going on with the shield, but it does look good. It's going to have some nice little panel lines. 
Next is going to be your dual beam sabers, and you can just go ahead and mount them on the back. Uh, if you don't want them on the back, you can take them off, obviously, uh, but you can put both of the beam sabers on the back where the shoulders are, and they look great. I love the beam sabers. They're very unique because I don't think I have any beam effect parts that are like this. Uh, they're very, very thin, and it seems like they're only for maybe this particular suit, but I could be wrong. And next is going to be the Gundam Hammer. Uh, pretty much more or less a Universal Century type weapon because you don't see this exact physical Gundam Hammer, but the 00 series does have a Gundam Hammer. It's more beam oriented, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, however, this is going to be just purely physical, and I love it. It looks great. Um, technically, Turn A, I think, does use two Gundam Hammers at some point, just like spins them around. So it looks great. I am probably going to just use the extra one I have, because I do actually have two in my collection, and maybe I'll use it after the, the paint it build. We'll see, though, if I really want to paint up an entire chain. Um, otherwise, I might keep the chain exactly how it is. I mean, it's fine, but I'll just paint up the top and bottom portion of the hammer. You're also going to get a secondary set of hands, so you are going to have just fixed open hands alongside your articulated finger hands. Then you can swap out the white chest with an actual just blue chest. I've seen both, and, and I don't know, I'll have to rewatch the anime because I don't exactly know when you have the two different types of chests. Maybe one's just kind of like uh, an illustrator mechanical kind of alternate version, but I think in the anime it only had the blue, all blue. So if you do want the all blue, you have the option. If not, you can go with the white. And I usually go with the white because it breaks up the blue, and I think that looks really good uh, instead of just being all blue. You do have a Lauren figure that just stands, but you have one that's etched into the pilot seat on the cockpit. So you can paint that one up, and you know, obviously he'll show through the cockpit's um, you know clear yellow. You also get a cow. And I feel bad because I do not remember this episode where it rescued a cow. I really try to remember, and I can just look it up on YouTube. It's probably not that hard to just find it. But I want to go back into the series fresh, so whenever I come across that episode, I want to be surprised by seeing that scene again. But yeah, you get a cow, and you can plug it right into the chest. Now, the chest is going to have missiles, and you can take out the missiles for the cow if you want to, but yeah, you can just go ahead and flip up all these panels in the front and expose missiles. You also get a stand adapter, which plugs right into the back. And lastly, you do get some black stickers that I did not use, and you're also going to get these dry apply decals, and they look good. They're very simplistic. They're not like warning or anything like that. They're just pretty much turn a Gundam and just a symbol. I think that's like the little Moonites uh, symbol, if I'm not mistaken. They're from the moon. You rented that room to moon people. We are the moon Uh But I do remember Lauren, he arrived at North America, so I don't know if these are actually for the North American kind of like affiliation or if it's just from the unit that he was with that put him on the mission. So Looks good, though. I like the, the dry applies. I'm actually going to keep them because I'm going to use probably one or two of them for the painted build, and hopefully I can get this actual decal sheet that I've been waiting because it has a bunch of the other decals I would love to use for this, but if not, then it's no biggie. I can also just use it later on whenever I, it does come in the mail. So for my final thoughts, honestly, guys, for 38 bucks, and this really does cost Roughly around 38 bucks or less. I think I picked up mine for like 28 bucks or it's like between 28 and 30 bucks over at a, a secondhand retail. Look, I'm be real with you. This is 100% without a doubt the most extreme version of a copet I have ever issued on this channel. You need this in your collection. Like if if I see your collection and I see no turn a Gundam but I see a bunch of C and a bunch of IBO and other kinds of you know mobile suits, I will deem your collection with peace and love incomplete. Honestly, this is just a beauty. And I, I really cannot be on the same page of people that truly just don't like the design. I think the design is what makes this so fantastic. It's wild. It's crazy. It's out there. It's unique. And I think that's just what Gundam truly needs so for a 38 dollars or less model kit i mean yeah you you can afford to go ahead and get this and maybe put you know that ibo that bill fighters kit to the side this is just something i know you will enjoy you're gonna have a pleasure detailing it 
you know, try and do some experimenting with it. Do some like, you know, little extra effects here and there. Um, you know, there is a different P Bandai set, which comes with the Moonlight Butterfly effects, which I didn't really cover in this review because I don't have those effect parts. So I didn't really want to talk about its capabilities like that without actually having those effects to display. Um, but if you do want that particular P Bandai, it is quite expensive. So you're going to be paying like almost three or four times the actual amount of this Master Grade for that version. But I think that version has a metallic kind of coating to it. So you are paying a little bit of a premium for a more of a premium Master Grade than just the normal version that's all, you know, flat. But that's it for me, guys. Thank you all for watching, and thank you to Orb for sponsoring this video, as well as all the other members. I really could not be doing this without you guys and all your support. So truly, thank you guys for everything that you do. Uh, but that's it for me. Hey, I'm going to go ahead and uh, get started on painting this, and hopefully it's going to be to not only Orb's liking, but it'll be to all your guys' liking. So I'll be seeing you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.